May I request everyone to kindly keep their phones on silent mode or switch off, please? वॉल्यूम करो यार नहीं मैं रिक्वेस्ट एवरीवन टू काइंडली स्टैंड अप Let's give a standing ovation to the Honorable CJI. <laughs> May I request Ms. Nandini Gupta, Member Executive SCBA, to kindly present the bouquet to Honorable Mr. Justice N. V. Ramanna, Chief Justice of India. May I request Ms. Yugandra Pawaja, Treasurer SCBA, to kindly present a bouquet to Honorable Mr. Justice Yuyo Lali, Chief Justice of India Designate. May I request Mr. Upendar Mishra, Member Executive SCBA, to kindly present a bouquet to Mr. Tushar Mehta, Learned Solicitor General of India. May I request Ms. Sangeeta Singh, Member Executive SCBA, to kindly present a bouquet to Mrs. N. V. Ramanna. We are extremely thankful to you, ma'am, for accepting our invitation and gracing the occasion. Honorable Mr. Justice N. V. Ramanna, Chief Justice of India. Honorable Mr. Justice Yuyo Lalit, Chief Justice of India Designate. Honorable Judges of the Supreme Court, Mr. Tushar Mehta, Learned Solicitor General of India, Family Members of Justice N. V. Ramanna, Shri Vikas Singh, our President, Mr. Pradeep Kumar Rai, our Vice President, Mr. Manoj Kumar Mishra, President Skora, Mr. Sneashish Mukherjee, Vice President Skora, 
Mr. Devrath, Secretary Skora, Senior Advocates, and my fellow colleagues at the bar, a very good evening to you all. Today, we have gathered here to bid farewell to Honorable Mr. Justice N. V. Ravanna, Chief Justice of India. And how popular he has been as a Chief Justice can be seen with the way the, the whole <laughs> auditorium is full. This is the sixth function, I guess, we are having in this auditorium, but I've never seen such a crowd. This just shows the popularity of Sir. <laughs> he was elevated as Supreme Court Judge on 17 February 2014 and appointed Chief Justice of India on 24th April 2021. In his tenure of more than eight years as a Supreme Court Judge, he gave numerous landmark judgments. And in his tenure of uh, tenure as Chief Justice, Collegium cleared many names and more than 250 vacancies were filled. In fact, during his tenure as Chief Justice of India, nine judges took oath on the same day on 31st August 2021 for the first time in the history of Supreme Court as a Supreme Court judge. His initial tenure as Chief Justice was during the tough period of COVID, which had its own challenges. As a Chief Justice, sir, you resolved many issues which were standing tall for the past three years. In his tenure, more than 460 lawyers have been allotted chambers in the additional building complex D Block. Parking in basement one and basement two in additional building complex, which was closed for last three years, was again opened two months back. Members have been now saved from this scorching heat by giving this auditorium to SCVA for holding its function with more pride and dignity by Sir. Also, a utility launch for food at subsidized rates has been opened near Yoko Bank in Supreme Court. Again, it was an initiative of Sir. Thank you, sir, for considering the issues which were brought, uh, within, uh, brought to you by SCB and for resolving them in the interest of the bar. May I now request Mr. Pradeep Kumar Rai, Senior Advocate and Vice President of SCB, to kindly give his welcome address. Honorable Justice N.B. Ramanda, the Chief Justice of India. Honorable Justice Uday Umesh Lalit, the CJI designate, Mr. Tusar Mehta, Solicitor General of India, Mr. Bikas Singh, President Supreme Court Bar Association, <coughs> Rahul Kausik, Secretary SCBA, Manoj Mishra, who is standing there, and Sonia Mathurji, I can see them standing uh, there, uh, pres uh, President Skora, Devdat Secretary Skora, Honorable P.H. Parikh, sir, six time President of Supreme Court Bar Association, and ten times President of Skora. Honorable Judges of Supreme Court of India, family members of Honorable Justice Ramanna, Sri Mala Ma'am, and the, both the daughters, they are here, son-in-law is here, even people from village, they are here. We all, the entire executive committee of SCBA, welcome you all here. Sir, the gathering and the crowd which we are observing here is not that, that only. The similar number is standing and waiting outside. That shows the popularity of Honorable Justice and V. Ramanna. <laughs> Honorable Justice Ramanna is son of the soil. He was farmer. Thereafter, he became journalist. And thereafter, he started practicing in local high court before the end cat. One of his junior, he is here. Mr. Bithalla Nagishraeshwar Rao, who was first junior of Sir, and when Sir, uh, when Sir was there, a standing council of CAT, he got him appointed additional standing council. And when Sir was elevated as judge of the High Court in year 2000, Lordship got him the standing council panel of Union of India. Almost all those lawyers and the judges from various High Courts who are present here, that is a kind of a statement that how Lordship has actually functioned and taken care of their friends and the professionals and colleagues. Lordship, when joined Supreme Court as judge of Supreme Court of India, he had one motto and he said the opportunity to serve as a judge came with a tremendous responsibility. But I have never regretted a single day it is definitely not a service, but a calling. When Lordship became Chief Justice of India, those days were very difficult. 
entire nation was suffering with the COVID scare. Though our bar association members and everyone, they were working those days. And Dahul was those days joint secretary and Vikas Singh was president. But despite that, the environment was not good. Even people were not meeting each other. Everybody was in mask. Those days, Lordship helped at least several hundred advocates to get admitted in the hospital without even telling to anyone. He used to know that he comes to know that this lawyer or some this family having some problem. He immediately calls the doctor or some hospital and they were accommodated and treatment was provided to them. It's not an... Lordship has a great quality of making friends. Lordship has made around 21 Supreme Court judges from the day he joined the Collegium, in which Honorable Justice Sanjeev Khanna, Justice B.R. Gawai, and Surikan Sir, they were also part of that. And thereafter, when Lordship became Chief Justice of India, he appointed nine of them. Among all those appointees, seven of them are going to become Chief Justice of India. As far as NALSA is concerned, when Lordship was chairman of NALSA, I requested that there are only few mediators in Supreme Court and there should be more mediators and they should get the training from the Supreme Court, MCPC. Lordship directed MCPC and the file was also came to NALSA and thereafter 250 mediators are now trained because of Lordship's effort. As far as Supreme Court Legal Services Authority is concerned, Honorable Justice Chandrachud on Constitution Day advised us that lawyers should provide pro bono services to the litigants, especially in the Supreme Court. I said that each and every lawyer in the Supreme Court bar, they all are willing to provide the services, and most of them are, have never charged a single penny from the SCLC. So that is also a kind of cooperation provided from the bar to the bench. Whatever demands be made to the Honorable Justice N.B. Ramanna, sir, each and every demand was taken as if he is demanding from the bench. And he tried to resolve each and every issue. He tried to do whatever was possible. And he extended all kind of support to each one of us. Even Rahul mentioned about the utility, utility launch even our this waiting area near the old, uh, this other chamber block, the other side. And not only this, even canteen, other facilities, cooler, coolers, whatever was required, that was done. I re recall the day when there was a function in the bar council. On that day, Honorable Justice Narsimha said that Justice N.B. Ramana is like Sachin Tendulkar. because he performed so well. And I say, and I make a statement, Lordship, that you are still playing. You will be retiring because the inning is over. You are not out. <laughs> On the first occasion, when Lordship was the captain of cricket team, I don't know what his strategy he opted with the help of Honorable Justice Sundares that this judges team succeeded and they won against us. Otherwise, mostly we used to succeed. Lordship has delivered so many important judgments. In one of them is the Kirti and another person, Oriental Insurance Company, where Lordship held that despite the fact homemakers do not have a fixed income, their contribution to the economy must be recognized. Other than this, Lordship about the investigating agency when Lordship was giving a lecture and on democracy, role and responsibility of investigating agencies. Lordship said that Central Bureau of Investigation has come under deep public scrutiny. According to Lordship, action and inactions, CBI had often raised questions on its credibility. He said it was need of the hour to reclaim social legitimacy. Other than this, there are several judgments. Even recently, Lordship when this uh, review petition was there on, uh, on enforcement directorate, Lordship said that especially 
The central government on two specific issues, the notice has been issued. That is, one is not providing accused with the enforcement case information report, that is called ECIR, and then reversal of presumption of innocence. These steps, even from the judicial side, are, have great importance. I feel that Lordship is not going to retire. We all know that he is such an energetic man. He is 100% going to be here. Today, while this uh, last, I will just mention it, that today when this, uh, we were addressing the court, Mr. Dusyan Dave is here. He was in tears. And after seeing him, Ladyship Hema Kohli was also in tears. I have never seen a judge crying on the bench. And Mr. Dave, we all know that he is known for a different version of Dave, but today we saw his <laughs> different version. He cried because he had a wrong assessment when Lordship took over as CJI. He had a presumption and under a wrong assumption that Lordship may not be up to that mark. Now he realized, he cried, and Lordship has already forgiven everyone, whoever has said whatever they have said. Lordship has been a farmer. He knows how to catch the bulls by horn. So there, there is no need for worry. At last, I will simply say that any judge, like the chamber committee was there, Honorable Justice Gawai, Honorable Justice Surikant, and Honorable Justice Maheshwari, sir, they are members. That chamber committee has been given full independence, full authority. And because of that, only by the two or three meetings, it was possible that everyone is able to get the chamber and occupy the chamber. It was not possible otherwise. <laughs> only a strong judge can listen to the demands of the bar. Otherwise, we all know registry sometimes or other issue or this issue, they will create some problem and it goes into the vein. For that, we actually admire Honorable Lordship. At last, I will recite a Sanskrit sloka, which is completely suitable to the personality of Lordship. Krodo harses darpas sahitastavo manya manita yamarth kanaste savai rajar si uchyate. It means that a person who overwhelms his anger, joy, sorrow, and pride, who has no false modesty, neither confusion nor vanity, who can always stay economous in mind, is undoubtedly a wise, deserving position of leadership. Lordship, we all admire you. You have been our hero. We are really grateful. And I welcome each one of you who are here and also to them who are waiting outside. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pradeep, sir. May I now request Mr. Tushar Mehta, Learned Solicitor General of India, to kindly give his address. <clears throat> Honorable Chief Justice of India, Ramanna Saab, the Honorable Chief Justice of India designate, Justice Lalit Saab, the Honorable Judges of the Supreme Court of India and the High Courts present here, the very loving family of uh, my Lord Justice Ramanna, my dear friend Vikas Singh, my friend Pradeep Rai and Rahul Koshik, my seniors sitting here and my dear friends. Friends, it is said that a judge delivers judgments throughout his judicial career and the bar delivers the judgment the day on which the judge retires. And this is our verdict. Not a single chair vacant, people waiting outside, and that is the judgment of the bar, how popular and how lovingly your, how popular you are and how lovingly your lordship would be remembered. Possibly your family members 
may perhaps not be aware about the love and affection you are getting outside, namely the Supreme Court of India. <laughs> Friends, there are three things which I can talk about as a law officer, which shows immense contribution of my Lord Justice Ramanna. The first is the speed with which appointments were made in various high courts and various tribunals. As my Lord Justice Lalit remarked in the morning, one third of the total strength of judges in India is filled up by the present college. One third of the total country's strength. And the mission mode in which my Lord Justice Ramanna used to interact very diplomatically with all stakeholders to ensure that the appointments are timely made, not only in the Supreme Court, in the High Court, in the Supreme Court, but also in the tribunals, was amazing. And I have been mostly, as the learned Attorney General also said, on the receiving end, trying to help as much as we can. The second contribution which we can never forget is my Lord Justice Ramanna's zeal for infrastructural development of various courts throughout the country. Everything is documented and I don't need to or I don't wish to read everything which is contributed by Justice Ramanna so far as the infrastructure is concerned. But this needs not just the judicial or judicious approach, but a diplomatic approach by an administrator because the Chief Justice of India, apart from being a judge of the Supreme Court, is also interacting with several stakeholders and he requires to be not only learned, but he requires to be a good and efficient administrator. My lords have exhibited and established that my lords were both. So far as the judgments delivered by my lords are concerned, all of us are lawyers belonging to the same fraternity. There is no point in uh, repeating which judgments are delivered. But one thread in every judgment which I have found as a citizen of India, not as a law officer or as an advocate, was the judgments were capable of being understood by a common man. There were no pretensions of being learned or philosophical about the law. Even a common man knowing the language knows what the Supreme Court of India has decided. That, was, that is an amazing quality. It's very difficult for a judge to not only be precise, but to be simple in judgment writing. As a human being, I had occasions to know Sri N. V. Ramanna, the, on, the, the, the human being, the person, not the judge. A very humble and polite human being. I have never seen him being brash, negligent, rash or arrogant with anyone. A very loving family man and a very loving grandfather. Very few people would perhaps know about this aspect of Justice Ramanna's personality. But from very reliable sources, I have gathered one information which I am going to make public. Apart from law, my Lord has a different passion and that passion is regarding Telugu literature. This may not be a secret. But the secret is that his lordships are contemplating after retirement writing a romantic novel in Telugu. <laughs> I have stopped my research at that. I, I did not go into the roots what inspired his lordship to write a romantic novel after retirement. 
my lord's during when he is not reading law or doing something regarding the court work is generally i'm told reading telugu literature and maybe we may come to know after some time after a year or so that there was an eminent telugu poet sitting with us a year before <clears throat> i i wish his lordships a very good health uh, his lordships i'm told would be here in delhi and his love affection and guidance would constantly be available to us and we value whatever contributions your lordships have made which is immense and i wish his lordship good health a very contented life and a very satisfactory uh, life with the family because i am sure he must have missed those opportunity those moments to be with one spouse children and grandchildren my lords on a friday evening the presence of lawyers in this number speaks itself i have nothing more to add thank you so much thank you to shah sir the legacy of justice ramanna would be the way the judicial appointments <coughs> were made in the high court supreme court and tribunal in last 16 months and he was always a very warm person even whenever we would meet him he would meet or, or everyone with very warmly and was always very courteous with this may i now request mr vikas singh senior advocate and president scb to kindly give his address my lord the chief justice of india justice nb ramanna justice yuju lalit chief justice of india designate shri tushar mehta lanit solicitor general for india mr pradeep rai vice president rahul kaushik secretary honorable judges of the supreme court present here family members of justice ramanna judges from other courts visiting here members of the bar members of the registry members of the media it is a very big moment in the sense that justice ramanna gave a different perception to the judiciary in his entire tenure as chief justice of india his tenure made it absolutely clear within the country as well as outside the country that the indian judiciary is relevant is vibrant is alive to the rights of our people is always there to uphold the constitution and its values and last but not the least it is always there to protect the civil liberties of our people of this country his tenure reflects that he really gave importance to the we the people written on our constitution because ultimately the constitution was drafted as a document given by the people it was for the people and the judiciary is meant to always interpret it in such a manner that the people are always considered as first and their liberties are also always kept as the most important Justice Ramanna started off as a student leader at the age of 18. He was a journalist at the age of 22. Became a lawyer at the age of 25. He was keen to join politics, and with his intellect, and with his ability, and with his personality, his charisma. i personally feel that it is a loss for politics because if he had been there probably he would have been the prime minister of india today <laughs> it 
it is our it is our good fortune it is our good fortune that he chose to the legal profession and this is the this is the highest you can get here and he got here so a great tribute to you to you sir for firstly taking the call of joining this profession and ending up being the head of this family looking after this family nurturing this family and also ensuring that the country feels that the rule of law is supreme that the constitution is supreme sir is a god fearing person he is a devotee of balaji devotee of shirdi sai baba i remember whenever i used to go to shirdi uh, to balaji and give my hair you see immediately say this is obviously Bal balaji you should have told me i would have arranged for your darshan and it was so humbling to even hear this from him that is the kind of connect he has maintained with all of us sir has done a great work in promoting the alternative dispute resolution in this country he with the help of justice seema kohli in telangana could set up this international arbitration and mediation center which is a world class facility and the vision is that un, that today when singapore and london and paris are considered to be the arbitration hubs of the world we should bring the india into the same map where india is also considered as one of the preferred destinations for arbitration during his tenure he gave a very strong signal and which we are all thankful for him that the our judiciary is strong independent and will never shirk from performing its responsibility or in performing its constitutional obligations especially with regard to civil liberties i don't want to dwell on his cases because his cases are so many that uh, i'll probably end up the whole evening doing that but one case in particular which i am really moved by is the one which he dealt very recently where i had the privilege of appearing in front of him was the matter of freebies by political parties <laughs> the problem which honorable justice ramanna and the bench were grappling were how to give a judicial boundary to a purely political act a political act which today is resulting in states likely to getting bankrupt by these offers a state for instance having a 6 lakh crore debt starts with a freebie offer of another several lakh crores for the people just to get into power but ultimately that's politics ultimately what does how does the court step in and i was very impressed by his concern i was impressed by way he tried to keep the boundaries intact he never crossed the boundary he said within our boundary we have to set the terms we have to ensure that the public money the tax payers money is not thrown away just for taking power and that feeling which i saw during the hearing shows actually it was on the last few days of his hearing so shows exactly what he is and what his entire tenure has been with regard to his handling of sensitive matters which have political overtones and where the judiciary being one of the organs of the state has to ensure that it stays within the limits prescribed by the constitution which is of separation of powers sir you have been very nice to the bar and i can never forget the the goodies that we have got this building was not made available to us for almost 4 years this this very building where we are having this this auditorium where we are having this farewell today i remember 
जस्टिस इंदु मल्होत्रा फेयरवेल वी आस्क फॉर द बिल्डिंग दैट वॉज माई लास्ट टेन ईयर इट वॉज नॉट गिवन बिकॉज देर वॉज अ डिसीजन अर्लियर बाय द अर्लियर चीफ जस्टिस दैट इट इज नॉट टू बी गिवन टू द बार एट ऑल इट स्टार्टेड रेनिंग इट वॉज नॉट रेनी सीजन वी हैड ओनली वन अम्ब्रेला and the only umbrella since she was the chief guest of that day so we had to only provide that umbrella to her the rest of the people were suffering in rains so sir you understood that we are a part of the institution we are equal stakeholders in this institution and with that objective we requested you sir that this is if denying us this facility is actually only lip service when you say that we are equal stakeholders of this institution and in your tenure we got this facility 56 uh, uh, 56 judges have retired and we have had functions here and sir your popularity is visible by the people standing apart from all the chairs being taken and i am told i haven't gone outside i am told there are probably equal number of people standing outside we are also on youtube lot of people have taken the youtube link from me media has taken the youtube link from me and all that we see here today probably 10 times the number or 100 times the number would be watching all this on youtube this sir shows your popularity and the respect that you have gained as chief justice of india our chambers were also lying for four years ready in all respects again for some technical reason or the other it was not being allotted sir within your tenure the bar is happy yesterday in fact i i am so touched by the gesture yesterday that one day before although the allotment had happened a couple of days earlier but you could in insist upon the registry that please don't delay any further the letters of allotment have to go out before you retire and that was given yesterday it it shows how much you feel for the family which is the lawyer's family and as somebody else said that you take similar care for the judges as well you treat them also as your family and that is how because you are able to manage them as as part of one large family you are successful in getting judicial appointments done you are successful in getting or, uh, uh, selections made in the collegium and because of which we have had the probably the highest numbers of appointments in a particular period of time than any chief justice has had ever in the recent past <laughs> sir you were uh, your 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 tenure was marred a little bit by covid because covid did not allow you to function the way you could have functioned for this entire uh, period as chief justice of india but within those limitations you still ensured that the wheels of justice keeps on moving the disposal remained and as and when the uh, covid was uh, coming down you also tried to ensure that the normalcy comes into the court and uh, and we are grateful that uh, this this institution which in spite of the worst of covid times kept on working and dispensing justice we were all we were all in that era where we had not learned the online mode we had not been brought up in the online mode we all learned the online platform we all uh, sort of uh, understood how it works and because of this justice delivery continuing even during covid time but i'm sure if you had had a tenure when covid was not have been there a lot more could have been done for the institution जस्टिस रबन्नाज लव फॉर बदर लिटरेचर जस्ट नाउ जो मिस्टर चौशाद मेहता इज ऑलरेडी सेड ऑफकोर्स आई डिट नो अबाउट हिज आइडिया ऑफ दिस रोमांटिक नॉवल आई एल ऑल्सो नॉट डू माई रिसर्च टू फाइंड आउट वॉट इज द इंस्पिरेशन फॉर दैट रोमांटिक नॉवल आई एम श्योर इट विल बी हिज वाइफ बट स्टिल आई वुड स्टिल लाइक टू डू माई रिसर्च हीज जस्टिस रबन्ना इज पैशनेट अबाउट कर्नाटिक म्यूजिक जस्टिस रबन्नाज वाइफ श्रीमती शिवमाला हैज बीन अ ग्रेट सपोर्ट फॉर हिम and it is it is all it is something which is very common that behind every successful man there is women and obviously it is shrimati shivmala thank you madam for coming here
and gracing this occasion. He also has two daughters, NV Tanuja and NV Bhuvana, who are also here with us. And we wish both of you a very good, prosperous life. And I'm sure with your father retiring, you'll be able to take care of him now and ensure that he gets all that he has missed in his busy tenure as a judge and then as a Chief Justice of India. I once again wish Justice Ramanna a very uh, good, uh, happy, healthy, and prosperous life. And uh, I'm sure it's just a new innings which he's starting. And uh, this new innings will give him more fulfillment and more satisfaction. Thank you. Thank you, Vikas, sir. Is it Justice Ramana's initial tenure was marred by COVID, but administratively, he was always available for us. <coughs> May I now request Honorable Mr. Justice Yuyo Lalit, Chief Justice of in India designate to kindly give his address. Honorable Justice N. V. Ramana, Chief Justice of India, Mrs. Shivmala Ramana, family members of Justice Ramana, my esteemed colleagues, brother and sister judges of the Supreme Court, Mr. Tushar Mehta, learned Solicitor General for India, Mr. Vikas Singh, President, Supreme Court Bar Association, the Honorable Vice President, Supreme Court Bar Association, Secretary and other office bearers of the Supreme Court Bar Association, President and office bearers of Supreme Court Advocates on Record Association, some of the Honorable Judges of High Court who are present today, learned senior advocates of the court who are present today, junior advocates, members of the registry, members of print and electronic media, ladies and gentlemen. It's a tough time for somebody like me. Look at the popularity of my predecessor. How am I going to don that mantle now, hereafter? <laughs> right at the outset, even before I assume office, I express my complete inability to match and go anywhere near this popularity. <laughs> the achievements of Justice Ramana are well known have been actually placed before you. It was very heartening and very emotional to see some of the speeches which were given in the morning in court number one. And that's the real tribute because a person who demits the office, who leaves that chair for the last time, if that's the tribute which he receives, while sitting there in the chair and while just about to leave that chair. That, to my mind, is the most fitting tribute that a person can actually receive. So I won't repeat all of that, but two achievements which really stand out. Number one, I said in the morning, on the side of appointments, more than 250 appointments of judges of the High Court in this country. If you compare the present strength of the judges of the High Courts in this country, it is 750. So almost one third of the strength is as a result of recommendations made by the Collegium in last about, say, 14 months or so. And I also said in the morning, that there may be a time in future that perhaps large number of judges of the Supreme Court may have been those who were appointed in that year. 
So that's the immense contribution that, that is before you. The second facet which I noticed was in the Chief Justices and Chief Ministers Conference. The way Justice Ramana meticulously and very forcefully tried to persuade all the Chief Ministers and Chief Justices to concentrate on issues concerning infrastructure in the, in the district and lower judiciary. That was remarkable. After the conference was over, the conference went on for about two days or three days. The results of that conference are resonating now. And I must tell and share with you that as a chairperson of NALSA, one of the projects that we are seeking to implement is to have what is called Public Defender's Office or Legal Aid Defense Council. And we are insisting that in every district there must be a Legal Aid Defense Council Systems Office which will be on the lines as public prosecutor's office. And the issue came up. Very well, that office would require some space. And the kind of perseverance which was shown in the Chief Justices and Chief Ministers Conference, that I must say that in every district, the concerned states are willing to provide us minimum of 800 square feet of area to have the office of public defender in every district. And I must say that this is something which, which owes because of Justice Ramana's perseverance and the issues that he took up in Chief Justice and Chief Minister's conference. I know you all are waiting for Justice Ramana to address you. You haven't come here to listen to me. <laughs> but very well, since I have the opportunity, and I know that my role is now cut to size, so therefore let me place some of the parts which I intend to do in my next innings of 74 days. Three areas. I had a word with the office bearers of Supreme Court Bar Association and Supreme Court Advocates on the Record Association earlier in the part of the day. One, and this is where we need to take the cue from Justice Ramana and then carry forward. One area which is listing, and I must assure you that we will strive hard to make listing as simple, as clear, and as transparent as possible. <laughs> Number two, the area which is mentioning of urgent matters, that also I will certainly look into. I will have a word with all my learned colleagues on the bench. And we will certainly sort that out. And very shortly, you will have a clear-cut regime where any urgent matters can freely be mentioned before the respective courts. <laughs> the third area, and that is of listing of matters before the Constitution benches and matters which are specially referred to benches of three judges. I have always believed that the role of the Supreme Court is to lay down law with clarity, consistency, and the best possible way to do it is to have larger benches as early as possible, wherever the matters are referred to such benches, so that the issues get clarified immediately. The matter has consistency, and people are well aware of what exactly are the contours of the peculiar positions in law. So we will strive, to ha strive hard to say that yes, we will always have at least one constitution bench functioning all throughout the year.
friends beyond that i can't say anything more at this stage <laughs> very well all of you are waiting for justice ramana to address you thank you so much thank you thank you sir we are very hopeful of next 74 days when you are going to take over as chief i just want to point out we had a two hour meeting he he is to take over officially tomorrow but he called us and scora both we had a two hour meeting we pointed out all the issues mr sir just pointed out regarding listing and other issues we are very hopeful that we are going to see further improvement with this for what we all are waiting to hear justice ramanna may i now request honorable mr justice nv ramanna chief justice of india to kindly give his address <laughs> honorable justice uday umesh lalit chief justice of india designate my brother and sister judges of the supreme court of india sri tushar mehta solicitor general of india sri vikas singh president and office bearers and the members of the supreme court bar association sri pradeep kumar rai vice president sri manoj kumar mishra president and office bearers of the members of the supreme court advocate on records association law officers senior advocates and members of the bar other distinguished guests media persons and ladies and gentlemen i am searching for words to adequately express my gratitude for the good words spoken about me by all i am very happy to see judges senior advocates advocates members of the bar people from legal fraternity all my well wishers family friends family members who have come here taking trouble to reach this place and bid farewell to me i thank each and every one of you for assembling here and for showering your blessings on me and my family you all know where i started my life's journey began in a remote village called ponnavaram in krishna district of andhra pradesh where electricity roads and basic amenities were not available first time i saw electricity when i was 12 years old i learned the alphabets of english around the same time we used to reach school by walking on muddy roads across the fields and crossing the streams with a lot of struggle and hard work i have come up in life for this i thank first my gurus that is my parents and the teachers in various government schools i am indebted to all my teachers lecturers because the essence of education that they had given to me was helpful not only for the purpose of acquiring academic knowledge but also helped in providing necessary moral strength and courage to face any calamity in life this arduous journey finally brought me to delhi this long journey marked by many experiences most of which are sour rather than sweet as the young age of 17 years i could lead a trade union around 10000 workers at the same time i could also lead students farmers and employees i was immersed in so many agitations and struggles i have also suffered on account of the emergency excesses in fact i lost an academic year in this count confronting problems and resolving issues is not something new to me this period enabled me to interact with persons of various ideologies and broadened my horizons they taught me as how to live in isolation in an environment where you cannot express or share your thoughts 
of on any of these issues i witness the resilience of human existence the power of human struggles dignity and poverty and most importantly unshakable hope and faith through these ordinary everyday experiences i developed the extraordinary fashion of serving the people being a first generation lawyer i have faced many challenges in my life and realized that except the hard work there is no shortcut to success the journey of struggle and bitter and bitter experiences in my career helped me to diversify my activities i had the opportunity of defending the state in several cases i watched the important events of this country unfolding from close quarters i always accepted rejection as god's reduction and retained my honesty and integrity i want to every advocate to remember that sometimes life scares you and beats up you but there is a day when you realize that you are not just a survivor you are a warrior <laughs> you are tougher than anything that is thrown you way my professional life was also full of challenges to begin with i was in two minds to be a judge or to become the people to offer leadership i believe in destiny in god and the blessings of the almighty it has been the honor of my life to be elevated as a judge i accepted it with full all humility i always remembered myself while functioning as a judge on my privileged obligation to discharge services to this great society once i became a judge i gave my heart and mind to it from the date i joined bench i reached the highest possible position in the judiciary i have subjected to conspiratorial scrutinies my family and i suffered in silence but ultimately the truth will always prevail satyamaya vajete at this juncture i am reminded the words of martin luther king junior the ultimate measure of man is not where he stands in the moment of comfort and convenience but where he stands at times of challenges and controversies unquote anything and everything that i could achieve were only after facing a lot of struggle setbacks and hardships in life i have embraced all the challenges that came my way and strengthened myself and understood that every failure carried with a seed of equivalent advantage i never claimed myself to be a scholarly judge or a great judge but i have always believed that the ultimate purpose of justice delivery system is to provide justice to the common man i have elaborated in my career earlier speeches as how difficult the life of a judge is your health also gets ruined in the process only judges and lawyers understand this aspect of judges life it is for you people lawyers particularly to explain to the people of hard work involved in a judges life now coming back to the jurisprudence in the last 75 years of our jurisprudence have evolved considerably our judiciary is not defined by a single order or decision yes at times it felt sort of people's expectations but most of times it has championed the cause of the people it is widely predicted that the ak gopalan case the due process of law was history but this court in case of manaka gandhi restored what was taken away earlier similarly adm jabalpur was seen as a death canner on personal liberty subsequently the error was stood rectified by nine judges bench in k s putta swami the institution never hesitated to remedy itself your hope upon the institution cannot be so weak that is that it is shattered with one perceived unfair judgment when it comes to an individual judge the expectations are very high 
in the game of cricket the player is expected to hit every ball for a six after all everyone loves to hit six but and win a clothes off for himself and the team but only a player knows as how to deal with each ball given the conditions of the pitch the style of bowling and the placement of the fielders <laughs> at times the circumstances may not allow him to score even a single run the advocates are best placed to understand this predicament of a judge and dispel wrong notions about them here i would like to read out the senior advocate mr sanjay hegde wrote in a newspaper article i quote this is in the context where i have decided a case of anuradha bashin where right to speech right to access to internet etc there is a criticism that i have not given full relief i quote that article when a senior advocate asked justice bhagavati about the dichotomy between the reasoning and the relief that is in menaka gandhi and r d setty the judge explained that his brother judges were only concerned with the relief being denied in those cases as long as justice bhagavati followed their lead on the relief he got to write the judgment and lay down doctrine of law that continue to operate deep into the future every lawyer who today wins on the basis of r d setty and menaka gandhi judgments was his victories in no small measure to bhagavati's foresight unquote in earlier days the bar used to play a proactive role in the resistance the members of the bar used to willingly associate themselves with various social causes it is the legal battles initiated by the bar association that have led to progressive interpretation of the constitution it is in this spirit that bar must work to strengthen democracy one aspect that i want to bring to your notice is my choice of traveling across the country almost every weekend to speak to the public through various events the popular perception is that the indian judiciary was alien and quite distant to the general public there are also still millions of suppressed people who needs judicial help who are apprehensive to approach the judiciary in times of need my experience so far has convinced that in spite of fulfilling its constitutional mandate the judiciary does not find adequate reflections in the media thereby depriving the people of knowledge about the courts and the constitution i felt it was my constitutional duty to dispel these notions and bring the court closer to the people by way of generating awareness and building confidence among the people about the judiciary from what i get to hear from the common people during my visits i am happy to note that people are able to engage with me on my subject in their language i have actively tried to promote a sense of, a sense of belongingness of the people with the system my constant endeavor was to make the people aware not just about their rights and obligations but also about the constitutional scheme and democratic values and the institutions my sincere efforts was to initiate a dialogue as a part of my public speaking engagements i have focused on certain subjects of institutional importance the focal point of any justice delivery system is the litigant the justice seeker but our system practice rules being colonial in regime may not be best suited to the needs of indian population the need of the hour is the indianization of our legal system when i say indianization i mean the need to adapt to the practical realities of our society and localize our judicial delivery system i have pushed for modernization of judicial infrastructure as a means of providing access to justice i also tried to highlight the difference between the arrears and backlogs to put things in perspective arrears refer to delays that are unwanted unwarranted every delay is not an error some cases of delay might due to valid reasons on the other hand backlogs refers to a situation where the number of cases instituted in a period is more than the number of cases disposed of in same period 
I am happy to inform you and thank my colleague judges and collegium judges, Brother Justice Lalit, Justice Kanvilkar, Justice Dhanunjay Chandrachur, Justice Nageshwara, and consulted judges. In the last 16 months, we could appoint 11 judges to the apex court and 255 recommendations for various high courts. Now already 224 are appointed. And this amounts to nearly 20% of the total sanction strength of the high court. Due to our concerted efforts, we could make considerable progress in appointing more number of women judges and promoting social diversity on benches. We got 15 new chief judges of various high courts during the same period. This process is a reflection of the coherence and determination of the judges to strengthen our institution to further the goal of justice. These are the issues that I tried to do my best to solve. However, I acknowledge there are many other issues that the system is facing and it needs scientific assessment. From the very beginning, my stand is that since independence, no systematic assessment of the judicial system in, the, in India has taken place. The bar, the bench, and the government are all equal stakeholders in the justice delivery mechanism. We need their coordination efforts to revamp the entire system. The issues faced by the judiciary cannot be looked into isolation. The judiciary is an independent when it comes to adjudication of cases. But with respect to finances or appointment, it is still dependent on the government. To coordinate and to get the cooperation from the government, the interaction is inevitable, but interaction does not mean influence. I hope this dialogue between the judiciary and the public will continue. I am debating my office with utmost contentment. When you ultimately judge me as a judge, I would like to say that I may be judged as a very ordinary judge. But one who greatly relished and enjoyed the job. I may be judged as one who meticulously followed the rules of the game and did not trespass into provinces problem. More particularly, as one who recognized preliminary the moral power of a judge. I may be remembered as a judge who heard the senior and junior alike. <laughs> as a judge, I always wanted my name to be itched on the hearts of the people through my conduct and behavior, rather than case law and generals. I want to remain in those vibrant hearts which will give me warmth and keep me going forever. I have seen, I have been seen the flow of emotions in courtroom number one this morning. This is a reflection of the strong sense of your belongingness with the institution. I was touched by uh, the display of emotions, in particular by Attorney General Sibyl, Mr. Dave, and Solicitor General. With my best intentions and efforts, I have carried out my solemn duty with a debt of gratitude to my motherland. This country has provided me with many opportunities and happiness, and it was an honor to serve you all. Both your support and criticism has carried me this far. The end of my tenure just marks the end of my constitutional assignment. However, I shall fulfill the constitutional woes till the end of my last breath. <laughs> I did my best, whatever I can. It is with the cooperation of all my brother and sister judges. Credit goes to everyone. I never miss an opportunity to quote the famous Telugu poet Mahakavi Gurujada. Deshe mante matti kadoi, deshe mante manushloi. Gurujada gave a universal definition to the concept of nation. He said, a nation is not merely a territory. A nation is essentially its people. Only when people, it, it's, when, when we, it, when people its progress, the nation progress. Swanta labam kanta manukoni paruguvari kithod padavai. Gurajada went on to urge people to raise above one's own interest and to extend a helping hand to those in need. If we put this principle in practice, we will soon start seeing a better world free of conflicts and violence. 
it is towards establishing such a progressive world that we collectively need to endeavor as a global citizens. En enlightened citizens and uh, the most important stakeholders of our judicial system, I urge upon you all to think about the society, the nation, that is the people, it is the universal brotherhood that will bridge the gap. Before I conclude, I would like to place on record my sincere thanks to all my colleagues on the bench. I congratulate first my brother, Justice Lalith, Chief Justice of India designated, who is going to take over tomorrow. <laughs> I am confident that his tenure will be a grand success. I request all of you to extend fullest support and cooperation to my brother, Justice Lalith. He has already proved his leadership while he is the chairperson of NALSA. I had no doubt that his focus and priority will definitely take care of the institution. I had the privilege of being guided by the learned Attorney General Sri K.K. Venugopal, the Bhishma Patamaha of the Indian Legal Fraternity. I also thank the Solicitor General of Sri Tushar Mehta for his active assistance to the court. On a personal level, he is a good human being. He comes forward readily to help anyone in need. I want to correct here Mr. Tushar Mehta, just like the IB reports, this is your report that I am going to write in romantic novel is not correct. I may I may write some books on literature. I may write some books about the historical events which has taken place while I was in as an advocate and all that. <laughs> Mr. Vikas Singh, I need not tell, he's a strong leader, the president of the SCBA, a dynamic man. He's a very <laughs> persuasive. But only one caveat I want to advise Vikas is, Vikas ji, with little soberness, he can achieve many more. <laughs> I would like to sincerely thank the Secretary Generals, the registrars of the entire registry of the Supreme Court. My personal residential staff has worked with me for a long time. I thank them all for their constant dedication and hard work. The media has been extremely cooperative in disseminating the information about the judiciary. You share the equal burden of dispelling myths and notions. I thank you for being an active partner in this collaborative project of strengthening the judiciary. I thank each one of the journalists who have been covering the proceedings of the Supreme Court diligently, efficiently, and instantly. My journey so far has been made possible due to innumerable sacrifices made by my reward parents, Ganapati Rao and Sarojini Devi. And my two elder sisters, Prabhanjani and Vani. My wife, Sivamala, stood me like a rock through thick and thin. She has been my equal partner in all my struggles and successes. I am blessed with two loving daughters. Dr. Sri Bhuvana and Sri Tanuja, who continue to cheer my life. Now, my family also includes Ritesh and Trilok, my son-in-laws, and with three grandchildren, Sriya and Sri Nitya and Sri Virat. I do not have to worry about my post-retirmental phase. They will take care of me. <laughs> with these words, I must thank one of all of you, my friends, my childhood friends, and my relatives, some judges, lawyers, came across all the way from remote places from Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, and all that. I thank each and every one of them. Before concluding, I want to say, because you must have seen, I am correcting my draft on the table also. Because after going back tomorrow, today morning uh, court, 
I started dictating this uh, note. Uh, so I could not properly place the, some of these things. It's uh, my favorite quote, but I want to tell you. This is a English politician said it. I quote, history is not the burden of one man or woman alone, but some are called upon to meet a special share of its challenges. History is more than the path left by the past. It influences the present and can shape the future, unquote. Only history can judge as to the influence of the path left by me on the present and the future. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. I have no words to say when I see the standing ovation and the love which sir is receiving. You spoke from the heart, sir. Your life is an inspiration from how humble background you can reach the highest office in judiciary in this country. A life of a Supreme Court judge is not easy. You have to read so many briefs, have to give judgments, and a life of a Chief Justice of India is all the more tougher. You have to do the administrative work also. We wish you, sir, a very happy, healthy, retired life, sir. And it's a time to give to your family and for your passion to write a book, sir. Now, <clears throat> I'll read the message given by Honorable Mr. Justice N.V. Ramana, Chief Justice of India, for the members of the bar. This institution is the last bastion of justice, and bar is its armada. I urge all of you to protect it jealously. When this institution was th uh, th threatened externally, History has witnessed bar rising to the occasion on numerous occasions. It is only when you insulate this institution can this institution grow. I request all of you to be critical, not cynical. Be courteous, not confrontational. Be cognizant, not callous. Be creative, not cribbed. Nurture young talent, set examples, hone necessary skills, adopt new technologies, encourage women lawyers, and support legal aid. Work as one toward achieving justice and making it accessible also. Your work is not like any other vocation, it's calling for public service. India needs you as soldiers of democracy, as fighters for liberty and keepers of rule of law. Thank you, sir, for the kind words for the bar. <clears throat> may, may I now request Mr. Vikas Singh, President SCB and Vice, Mr. Pradeep Rai, Vice President SCBA to kindly present a memento on behalf of SCBA to Honorable Mr. Justice N.V. Ramanna, Chief Justice of India. May I now request Mr. Rohit Pandey, Joint Secretary, SCBA, to kindly give a vote of thanks. Thank you, Rahul ji. First of all, Ramana sir, aapko sadar padam. Ham log aapko bhool nahi paayenge. Sir, sir, आप हमारे दिल में बसे हैं। We are fortunate that we had one of the most efficient Chief Justices of India, and by your grace, the bar was benefited in your tenure. We congratulate Honorable Mr. Justice N. V. Ramana for successfully serving his official tenure as the Chief Justice of India, and we also wish him luck for the upcoming tenure. Of working towards the greater good of the society, we should sure be successful. We have such surety of success only. As Ramana sir has been principal person, 
not only on the chair but even off the chair he has attended the girwans of the bar effectively and has always acted as a strong link between bar and bar and bench sir your decisions in the interest of bar will never be forgotten we are grateful to honorable mr justice and v ramana the chief justice of india for accepting our invitation we are grateful to family members of honorable mr justice n v ramana the chief justice of india for accepting our invitation for gracing the occasion we are also extremely grateful to honorable mr justice u lalit honorable the chief justice of india designate for accepting our invitation to preside over this function we express our gratitude towards the honorable judges of supreme court of india honorable retired judges of supreme court of india and honorable judges of high courts for gracing the occasion we wish to thank mr tushar mehta learned solicitor general journal of india learned law officers senior advocates senior members of the bar for their gracious presence mr manoj misra president skora mr sanesh mukherjee vice president skora mr devra secretary skora mr virender kumar vansal learned secretary general mr rajesh goel and other registrar of the supreme court press electronic media persons and other distinguished guests honorable members of the bar for gracing the occasion kindly join us for high tea at ground floor may i request the executive committee members of scba to kindly come a group photograph on the stage